What I wanted to do um, based on a question that just came through in the niche selection channel is just actually record a short video talking about niching up, niching down, niching sideways. Move my microphone over here. I just had to rearrange the whole office because we just ended our quarterly meeting and had to like reset up you know, how I make videos. But um, yeah, I was gonna record a video on it. And I thought instead of just recording the video and then, you know, posting a link in Discord, I would hop on live like this. I would go through, you know, the process of niching up, down and sideways. And then what I'll do after I just go through, you know, the few key points here is take any questions that come through in the chat in Discord. And, uh, you know, think of this as like an impromptu coaching call on the back of it. And, uh, you know, I'll answer some questions afterwards. So. With that being said, let me um, make sure I could do this. I'm gonna just pull up my screen share here. And this is the question that prompted this. It came through in the niche selection channel on Discord here. And it said, what do people think of a broad niche containing different product categories, but centered around a common theme? For example, everything Pokemon themed, just an example, definitely not doing this. That's good. I'm assuming you also saw my video on is dropshipping legal talking about how you can't just sell branded things. But for an example, Pokemon stuff. And then it continued, something like this may suffer from lack of specificity. I think I said that right, but may make up for it in cohesiveness, established fan base, and lots of opportunities to create. I figure this is akin to a pet supplies niche. So um, I think it's a good question, right? Because it actually gave like two hypothetical examples and I did respond to it in Discord, but I wanted to be able to elaborate on that and then again, dive deeper into niching up, down, and sideways. So with the Pokemon example, first of all, again, none of us are gonna sell Pokemon stuff or anything branded like that. But I agree that if, let's say, somehow we were authorized retailers to do so and there wasn't competition at every major store in the world, then yes, a Pokemon-themed store would make sense, right? Because like the question said, you kind of have that fan base, they're coming in and maybe they wanna buy you know, some cards, maybe they wanna buy some stuffed animals, maybe they wanna buy some action figures, maybe they wanna buy a video game and a t-shirt and all of those other things, right? So for something like that, I wouldn't be niching down to sell maybe only Pokemon cards. For something like that, I would want to sell kind of everything all around it because we would have a lot of repeat customers, bring people back, get sales that way. So for the first example, I get the thought process, and the th thought process, I should say, and that makes total sense. But then this led into the second hypothetical example here for the pet supplies niche. And this is where my thoughts definitely differ. And that's the, the first thing that I wanted to talk about. So let me switch to this screen here now on the iPad and kind of just share why, right? And we'll just use the actual example given here, which was pet supplies. And let's say you sold something like pet supplies, right? Now that does include many, many subcategories that are definitely not all related. Again, the Pokemon example, you could think of tons of different merch and gear and games that are, but with pet supplies, there are, especially in our world, right? In the high ticket world, there are people that want a very specific thing at a very specific time. And our goal is to become pretty much the expert or authority site for that thing. Thing. That's what we want to get to over time. So the examples I gave in my quick typed out response to this was if, let's say I, I had the idea, right, as I was doing niche research and I was in, you know, the, the first Discord channel uh, for, for niche selection, I had the idea for niche, uh, niche uh, sorry, pet supplies, I would definitely want to niche that down. Now, what niche that down means is basically get more specific. So what are some quick examples that would be in the pet supply world, but that are high ticket and that are much more specific? Now, granted, I haven't researched these, so take this for what it's worth. This is like a first step brainstorming process. But my thoughts were maybe we would want to do something like sell um, dog crates, right? Maybe we can get even more specific and do something like dog crates that go in the back of people's SUVs, right? So maybe, you know, put in car here. Again, not research, just brainstorming. And I thought, okay, well, what else could be something that is you know, in the, the pet supply world that is also high ticket, that's also specific? And the next thing that I thought of was aquariums, right? So maybe we're gonna research aquariums now and add that to our list. Um, something else that I was thinking about was, I don't know, what about bird cages, right? One of my uncles has a 40-year-old parrot that has a massive bird cage, and I'm sure it wasn't cheap. So maybe bird cages would be something I would now add to my niche list to work off of, right? So what I'm doing here is taking that main idea, that pet supplies idea that was given as an example, and I am niching down, right? 
I'm taking basically something that was bigger and I'm trying to make it smaller because when the person is searching for maybe a dog crate that again goes back in the back of their SUV, I want them to find us and I want our site to present itself and market itself as the basically dog crate experts, right? We'll get you the exact right thing you need for your size car. This is what we do. This is what we specialize in. I wouldn't want the person to go there and be looking at that and then see maybe a sidebar filter that says, you know, I don't know, saltwater aquariums. I don't want that. I want this to be the dog crate store. Again, assuming it meets all of the other criteria from modules one and two of the blueprint. Now, the next example would be, you know, the aquariums, which I definitely spelt way wrong. That is supposed to be a Q, but it's probably still spelt wrong. But with uh, aquariums, if I wanted to sell them, I would want to go as specific as possible. So maybe even that first aquarium search that I was doing as I was doing my research, maybe then I noticed, you know what? I could actually do only saltwater aquariums because I don't even know, I've never had one, but maybe that is different. Maybe there's a massive uh, audience there. Maybe there's tons of suppliers. Maybe there's not too much competition when it comes to the product level. So maybe this, I even, you know, again, niche down further and go from aquariums to saltwater aquariums, right? This is what I'm trying to do when I'm niching down. I'm trying to get as specific as possible as long as the criteria for module one and two of the blueprint are met. What does that mean? You know, the basics, I wanna be able to find at least 20 brands that are being sold on online only stores. Between those 20 brands, I wanna find at least 100 products. I don't want it to be something seasonal. We're gonna use our tool to make sure it is evergreen. And I'll just do this quickly before we move on to niching up and then niching sideways. Um, I'll pull up the dropship blueprint. We'll uh, close the screenshot here. And thank you for the question, by the way. And we'll just come here and go into the blueprint and then we'll go down to module two, right? So any of these niches and really all of these niches, I'm gonna be doing you know, tracking niche demand, the evergreen test, the demographics test, the brand loyalty test, the dropship friendly test. I'm gonna be going through all of these. And once they are niched down, like we just went through, guess what? They might not all pass the tests. And that is when we think about niching up, right? When the criteria of module two is not met, then it's time to think, okay, well, do we just cross it off our list? You could, but if you want to make more use out of what you have, the next step should be let's niche up a level. So let's go back here and we'll just come down a bit and we'll continue with these same, you know, niches for now or these same examples. And then if anyone has any questions, you know, after just go through the next couple minutes, feel free to put them in chat in Discord. Um, I have this pulled up right now in the Q&A coaching call section. So again, any questions on this, you can ask them here and we will cover them after. But the next example would be, let's say you were niching down, right? That's how you started or maybe you started on your niche list with saltwater aquariums because maybe, you know, I don't know, something that you had bought recently, a friend bought, and that's what you were thinking of. Well, maybe when you search for uh, the saltwater aquariums, you find that you only get, let's say, 10 brands that are being sold online only, right? And this is just one piece of the criteria, but again, let's just choose this one because if any of them aren't met, that's when you would want to consider niching up. So saltwater aquariums, all the, let's say all the other criteria is met, but there's not enough brands for you to start your first store. What do we do with that? Again, do we throw it away? My advice would be, no, still try to make use out of it and then go one level up. So instead of just uh, saltwater, you're now just going to sell, or at least research, all aquariums, okay? So now your basically pool of potential products and suppliers increases. And now maybe instead of only finding 10 brands that are dropship friendly as you're going through the dropship friendly test in lesson 2.6, now you can find, let's just call it 25 total brands. Great. And again, assuming all of the other criteria is met, what you did here by niching up, right? So we'll just put up is you took a niche that could have been a loser here. And again, instead of just giving up on it or whatever, you now found something that you can uh, can actually use. You know, let's make that green to show what we would actually want out of it, right? So now you you would have a niche and you would have something you can proceed with and build your first business off of. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And if it does to everybody, just let me know in chat. Again, any questions, feel free to ask them there and I'll answer it once I complete this video. But the next thing that I wanted to talk about is niching sideways and when I basically use that strategy, right? So let's come down a little bit further here on our digital whiteboard, AKA my iPad. And let's just say you were doing your research and on your list you put trampolines. Again, don't take any of the you know, examples I'm giving you as this is a good niche or this is a bad niche. This is literally me just uh, brainstorming ideas. 
So trampolines, okay. So you, uh, you're doing your research, that's on your list, and now you're out there and you're looking at everything and you're seeing, you know what, it really doesn't pass a lot of the criteria and you know, how can I niche up on trampolines? And it's just not meeting the criteria, right? You're like, you know what, this is not gonna work. Then that is a scenario where maybe you want to just cross it off because you know, how many variations are there, right? Like from the more, it's not like you were looking at, for example, let's say in ground trampolines and then you niched up to all trampolines. If you did that, maybe the criteria still isn't met, you'll get to a point where it's like, well, what do I do with this now? Well, in my opinion, that's where you want to do what I call niching sideways. Now, what do we do when we niche sideways? We try to think of things that aren't directly related, but that are basically indirectly related. So an example here would be trampolines, that's not gonna cut it. Maybe we will now look up bounce houses, right? Um, the ones that people buy for their, you know, their backyards, set up for parties, set up when they have a bunch of space outside, right? We're now gonna research that. And maybe bounce houses meets the criteria. And again, now we took a niche that was basically dead based on our hypothetical research in this scenario. And we have one that in this hypothetical scenario, again, is a winner that we can build our first business on and be successful with. So. Those were the things I wanted to cover, and hopefully that does make sense for everybody, what you know, going up, down, or sideways means. If you have any questions on this, definitely ask them in Discord, because again, I will post this as a video. And what I'll do now is like the actual recorded version of it. Um, I'll cut the recording, and then I'll answer any questions that come in on the Discord channel.